Good morning. I'm Linda Mori here at South Harbor Creek United Methodist Church with today's devotion for Wednesday, November 11th, 2020. Today is Veterans Day. So to all the veterans out there, thank you for serving. Our country is indebted to you. We are grateful for the freedom we have because of you. In our devotion time on Wednesdays, we have been looking at the Beatitudes listed in the fifth chapter of Matthew. Today, we look at Beatitude number five. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Matthew 5, 7. When Jesus was speaking during the Sermon on the Mount, he was really speaking to those who are truly Christ's disciples. If we call ourselves disciples of Christ, these blessings are meant to aid us in living joyfully. They describe the nature of true happiness. In almost all cases, the phrases used in the Beatitudes are familiar from the Old Testament, but in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus elevates them to new levels and teachings. All of the Beatitudes present a new set of ideals that focus on love and humility rather than force. They echo the highest ideals of Jesus' teaching on spirituality and compassion. Each beatitude consists of two phrases, the condition and the result. For example, as we have already noted in Numbers 1 through 4, the poor in spirit is the condition, and receive the kingdom of heaven is the result. So for number two, those who mourn will be comforted. In number three, the meek will inherit the earth. In number four, those who hunger and thirst will be filled. And today, number five, the merciful will be shown mercy. Since God places such an enormous emphasis on mercy, it's important that we understand what it is. According to Joshua Travers, who writes for LifeHopeAndTruth.com, mercy includes being kind and compassionate to someone who offended you when it's in your power to do otherwise. But according to William Barclay in his Daily Study Bible, the concept behind this beatitude goes even deeper than that. It refers to a conscious effort to see events through the eyes of another individual, to feel what he or she is feeling. No word in our language is sweeter than mercy, and no other word could bring the character of God more fully to mind. God is the father of mercies. It's not just a resource for God. He is the source the Father of mercies. In him is the root of pity, compassion, tenderness, kindness, and charity. And his mercy is from everlasting to everlasting, without beginning, before time, without end, and when time is past. Psalm 103, 17 in the New King James Version says, The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon those that fear him. The merciful do the best that they can to put their feelings aside and think about how someone else feels and experiences things. Mercy is not just about forgiving people, but identifying with them as closely as possible, understanding their experiences. Jesus Christ is the best example of mercy since he experienced human life and can fully empathize with his creation. In Hebrews 4.15, it reads, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Jesus, our high priest, lived as one of us and can completely understand what it's like to lose family members, to be cold, to have hunger, and experience discomfort and pain, and deal with frustrating and evil people. Jesus shows us in the Bible how to show mercy. He gracefully bends over the poor man and asks as if, as if he were the servant, what will you have me do for you? <clears throat> he doesn't take the place of superiority. He lets the poor man know and feel that he was dealing with him in love and grace. The Christian must not only be merciful, but he must learn to show mercy after the manner of Jesus Christ. BibleTruthPublishers.com says that being merciful involves considering others so that we can understand their circumstances and feelings and see how we can best help them. 
The merciful look long and hard at the needs of others. <clears throat> Excuse me. We can bullet points bullet point the qualities of being merciful as recognizing a need and acting on it, being able to walk in someone else's shoes, loving and appreciating others because God is love and man is in his image and likeness, loving unconditionally, forgiving and forgetting, not holding something over someone's head, and doing unto others as we would have them do unto us. Qualities of mercy are compassion, tenderness, pardoning, prosperity, lovingly blessed, and reflection of love back to us as we love others. We could paraphrase Beatitude 5 as, happy are those who sincerely show their care and concern for others, for others will show care and concern for them. Or, happy are those who always praise the good things and actions of others, for they will be praised rather than criticized for their thoughts and actions. But mercy does not only mean identifying with others, it also means being able to overlook or forgive a wrong, at the same time knowing that the one who needs mercy actually may deserve a different kind of treatment. Believers should have a tender, forgiving disposition because they themselves obtain mercy from the Lord. Therefore, they can be merciful to others. GotQuestions.com says, To be merciful is to show forgiveness and compassion to those in need. Jesus frequently spoke of this trait. In the Lord's Prayer, in Matthew 6, 12, he says, Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We are blessed if we are merciful, because mercy is something God himself displays. God's mercy is the withholding of a just punishment. It is his compassion on the miserable. Deuteronomy 30, verse 3 says, The Lord your God will restore fortunes. He will have mercy on you. And in Psalm 28, 6, the psalmist writes, Praise be to the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. The term mercy conveys the idea of a free gift, a favor, without obligation on God's part, and without claim on our part. It may be called the indulgence of love. We must not underestimate the quality of mercy. Jesus plainly says that the merciful are blessed. Perhaps no verse states it more clearly than James 2, 13. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. I know that I look forward to a merciful judgment from God when I stand before his throne. Don't you? Mercy doesn't mean to just sympathize with a person or to feel sorry for some in trouble. The Hebrew word for mercy means the ability to get right inside of another person's skin until we can see things with his eyes, think things with his mind, and feel things with his feelings. Clearly, when we do this, we will be blessed, and we will receive mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that our mighty and sovereign God is also a loving and merciful God. Although we don't deserve it, still you show us great compassion. We thank you for this loving gift and ask that you help us to show mercy to our neighbors and families. We ask this in the name of your dear son, Jesus. Amen. You are welcome to attend the Battle Plan for Prayer, which will be held at 11 o'clock today in the multi-purpose room. I hope that you have a glorious day. <laughs>